All right, already here we are another week in Employee to Entrepreneur Society, and we are having an, another interview with a great entrepreneur. Um, I am Kim Speed, and I am your host, and I am your brand visibility expert. Um, and each week we talk to a new entrepreneur and hear their story and their journey. And I am so excited today. I think you're going to love this one. We have Michael Lovett, and he is the founder and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network. And it's a San Diego and Toronto based burnout media firm. <laughs> he is a, um, an in-person and certified virtual speaker a certified NLP and CBT therapist, and is one of the leading authorities in burnout recovery and prevention. He's a Fortune 500 consultant, number one bestseller, and host of the Breakfast Leadership Show, a top 200 podcast on iTunes. He is a two times top 20 global thought leader on culture with Thinkers 360, Michael is a former healthcare executive, CIO, and CFO, overseeing $2 billion budgets. So he's been there and done it all. So welcome, Michael. Thank you for joining us today. Great to be with you, Kim. Boy, every time I hear that bio, I'm like, okay, no wonder I'm tired. But yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. it, it's, it, there, it's, it's like, wow. And, and I look back at that, not to jump ahead of anything, but a lot of those things have transpired in the last five years. And that's a key thing to highlight uh, in, in talking about what we're going to talk about today on how the world I became an entrepreneur and why did I leave the employee ranks. So glad to be here today. Oh, it's, it's great. And I think um, I've heard your story um, and it is incredible. Um, so what I would love to do is just take a little bit of time and um, Talk about where you were before you became um, leader of the Breakfast Leadership <laughs> Media Group, sure. um, and and uh, the incredible story that uh, was a prequel to all of this. Yeah, prior to um, doing all the things that I've done in the last few years, I was a healthcare executive, and I was working just outside of Windsor, Ontario, as a startup healthcare executive for a medical clinic. And I was responsible for recruiting physicians, hiring staff, navigating a site relocation six weeks before we had to open, and a variety of other things, and educate the community on why our clinic was better than the existing clinics that were in the area for, for a long time. So there's a lot of work involved with a startup, and entrepreneurs to launch their own business, you're in a startup. So there's a lot of work. Everyone, everyone knows that that tends to be the case. But I didn't have any boundaries around how I was spending my time. So I was on email from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. I was working some insanely long hours, not taking care of myself. Uh, my right. dietary choices were consistent of ordering my food through a speaker, driving around the corner and paying and being handed a brown bag. That was my <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner all yeah. the time. And just really running myself ragged and stressing out. And that prolonged stress led to uh, what I refer to as my year of worst case scenarios. So started that role in 2007. By 2009, uh, the dominoes started to fall. And just to give people a highlight of what happened, is, and over a period of 369 days, so from May 2009 to May 2010, the following happened. I had a heart attack that should have killed me. I lost my job during the economic recession of that time. My car was repossessed and my home was foreclosed all in a year. Now, if you look at each of those losses, those are significant. When anybody has gone through any of those things, they're significant. So let's just group all four of them together in a year. And it was, and, I, and we'll get into this later, the best thing that could have ever happened to me uh, because it gave me a second chance at life. And I took it. And burnout was the reason for all those things. I wasn't taking care of myself. I didn't have boundaries around how I spent my time. I wasn't eating things. I stopped doing things that I enjoyed because I was just too fatigued, lack of motivation, everything. I was just 
I was basically a walking zombie at that particular point in time. But after going through all of those challenges and then finding a new role in Toronto, ironically in healthcare, um, my, my parents wanted to have me committed. They, they were saying, what are you going back into the field that almost killed you? It's like, because I yeah. know I'm going to do it differently this time. And I did. Uh, and I right. did. Uh, but the story with all of those losses and, you know, we talked about this in, in the pre-show, a lot of people are going through very similar situations right now during this pandemic. And it scares me and it's concerning to me because I'm seeing burnout increase at rapid amounts. Certain, you know, there was a new study that came out, I think monster.com released it. They said mm -hmm. 69% of people surveyed said that they are stressed and burned out right now. Seven oh, out of I 10. I could believe it. I could believe it. So for everybody watching this, seven out of 10 people you know, based on those statistics, are burned out. You might be one of the seven. I certainly yeah. hope you're one of the three, but you might be one of the seven. And even during this pandemic with the working from home situation that so many people have been put into, on average, they're working 20% more hours than they did before. And for many people, they were working long hours anyway before the pandemic. And I, my first thought, I think, well, they found that 27-hour clock that I've been looking for forever. It's like, <laughs> yeah. they just did it. And what people did is they traded their commute time to work instead of getting up, getting ready, driving to work and doing all the things that they do. They basically roll out of bed and start working. And that is wow. not what you need to be doing. You, you, you should not do that. If you take any away from our conversation today, don't do that. You know, spend the first bit of the morning taking care of yourself. And there's a lot of ways to do it. But you know, like I said, those 369 days you know, shaped what I'm doing today. Uh, because after rebuilding myself, reinventing myself, establishing boundaries, changing my thought patterns and beliefs on a lot of things, uh, it, it birthed the organization because I recognized that so many people were going down the same road that I did. And I thought, I need to do something about this. So I started the process of building this organization. And as an entrepreneur and a startup, it, it took time, but I'm um, an infrastructure guy. So I wanted things to be rock solid. I wanted the infrastructure there. So as the business started to scale and I started doing more things that mm. the back office was taken care of. Right. Right. So <laughs> let's just take a step back there because it's overwhelming to hear what you went through. Like, you know, the heart attack for one, like, that almost killed you. And then, um, you know, losing your job, like how, how do you even start to recover from that? The best way that I did it was, and maybe I was naive. It was just a case of, okay, I need to pick myself up and do something. I, throughout all of those things and all those experiences, not once did I play the victim. I didn't say, woe is me. I didn't blame anybody. I was the cause of those things. Yes, there were other elements and other ingredients that created those scenarios, but I was the only one that was in every scene of those four scenes that we had talked about. I, it was me. So right. my choices, my behaviors, my actions created those scenarios to happen. And I recognized, okay, I created those bad things. I should be able to create good things, which I did. Does right. it take time? Of course. You know, especially if you're trying to do something you've never done before. I, you, it's going to take some time. You're going to be fumbling around. You need to have coaches and advisors and research and, and spend some time to figure out what works for you and what you want to do, what your goals in life and all of that are. But yeah, each of those things, when they happened, I didn't go, oh, another one. I mean, there, I'm not going to lie. You know, there were times where I was dejected. Sure. But I remembered during those times, like, that's not going to help me get better. And yeah. I, I, you know, it's like being depressed or upset about it is a natural reaction. You know, it's, you know, when I see, you know, on the news, you know, people lined up around the corner to get a couple bags of groceries. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, they're on EI or unemployment in the States. And I remember those days because when after losing my job, and remember I was on heart medication, which was a thousand bucks a month when you don't have drug coverage. 
So, oh my gosh. Right. So that was a, a pricey endeavor as well. It's if that's a financial incentive for people to take better care of themselves. You don't want to take heart medication unless you have to. And thankfully I've been able to wean myself all off of all of them, quite frankly. Really? Uh, that's amazing. Congrats. You know, it, it takes time yeah. and it takes, you know, working with a nutritionist and being more active and all the things that I needed to do long before that um, I'm doing now because going through that procedure and having the stents put into your um, artery, not the most pleasant of experiences. No, I'm sure not. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Thankful you know, that I survived because my blockage was in the left anterior descending artery, which they call the widow maker in the cardiology world. Because usually if there's blockages in that artery and you have a heart attack, you don't live. Thankfully, I did because uh, my blockages were 60 percent and 90 percent. So it was pretty much. Wow, a, that's a huge. Artery. Yeah. And, and it's a smaller artery, too. It's one of those things where it's this little there's other arteries around it that are much larger. There's this little artery and it's pretty important. It's a, an important artery in your heart. So mm -hmm. thankfully, uh, you know, they were able to put a couple stents in there and open things up. And last time, you know, I, I guess I go to the cardiologist for checkups and all of that. And the last time he said, well, I don't need to see you for, you know, at least 18 months. You're fine. And I'm like, good. That's good. And I know a lot of people, unfortunately, that have cardiac events don't have that same situation. You know, they, they just kind of continue to spiral. And thankfully, I was able to do the work to, to save myself and keep myself here to do the work that I need to do. So where do you even start? What, what, what can you do? Or how did you get into the mindset to change? Because you obviously didn't have that before. You mm -hmm. were like work, work, work. Um, like so many people, you just you existed, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you change? What did you do? What steps can you take? <laughs> sure. well, uh, reflection was a big thing for me. And, you know, I know some people, you know, that, that are spiritual, you know, they can connect with those things and whatever works for anybody is great. Do it. Um, for me, it was a lot of reflection and looking at, and going back and peeling back the layers. And that's a difficult exercise for some people, especially if you are a type A personality and you're burned out. Yeah. You got to dig through it. Burnout doesn't happen overnight. Um, yeah. It happens because of prolonged stress. But what I'm finding and why I pursued and obtained the, the certificates in CBT and NLP therapy was I was finding that a lot of people that I was dealing with that were burned out had some past traumas that go back a long time, even back to their childhood. Um, there was right. one person in, in, in particular where you know, they were driven as a child to do something. They were performing in a certain type of sport really well. Uh, mm -hmm. But they wanted to do something else, but their parents were pushing them. No, you want to do this. And it got to the point where that was kind of the mindset of this person that they had to just drive to be excellent and number one all the time. And it took a toll on them and uh, digging back going, okay, well, this is why you keep repeating this intense stress is because you're going into these things, trying to make things perfect and owning the podium and winning the gold medal. We're not in a competition in a lot of things that we're doing. We're really not. It's yeah. like you do your best, but do it in a way where it doesn't cost you, you know, your sanity or your well-being. And because they were having all kinds of medical issues and they were a healthy human being. You know, they didn't really have any type of chronic disease or anything like that, but they were starting to get them and they were wondering what the world going on. It's like, well, this is some of the things that are happening to you because you're stressing out about being so perfect that you're causing that stress to your body. And so the key takeaway is you have to make a decision and a choice to say, okay, that wasn't working for me. I need to go a different path. And you need to have the clarity with yourself to be able to do that. And unfortunately, when you're burned out, clarity isn't anywhere near you. And unfortunately, you have to kind of take a step back, pause, reflect, you know, list out the things that you love in life and list out the things that you don't and make sure you're doing more of the stuff that you love. Yeah. Um, it just seems like a big leap for somebody that never thought about, you know, um, like 
neuro linguistic programming and um, uh, meditation and or you know <laughs> it's just I know you had to reflect but like how did you even um, find the resources um, did you feel like it was natural or um, was it kind of a challenge to move into it well I, I think part of it was and at the time I was down in Windsor when I had the the cardiac event and unfortunately sometimes one of the nuances of our Canadian health system is yes we get the resources but we may not get them right away and there was a lot of cardiac patients that particular uh, time frame because I went in the hospital on a Friday um, I didn't actually get looked at as far as where the blockages were until Tuesday so I was there Friday from about one o'clock until Thursday at 11 30 so almost a week and there wasn't a television in the room. I didn't have my computer. They didn't have Wi-Fi available. So basically, there I was hooked up with IVs laying in a hospital bed. It's the first time that I had just had a chance to just sit or lay around and not do anything. And we are doers. You know, we're human yeah. doers. We're supposed yeah. to be human beings, but we end up being human doers. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. Do this. Our to-do lists are as long as a CVS receipt. Americans will understand that joke. Um, this, if you go to CVS, the receipts they give you are, oh, yes. <laughs> you, could, you could wallpaper a house with those things. Oh, or and I've even seen the images. You can actually touch the moon with them. But anyway, um, CVS should sponsor this. But anyway, uh, <laughs> at the, so I had almost a week just to lay there and reflect. There was no noise. Um, the cardiac ward nurses checked on me, but I was stable at that particular point. So there, there was other patients that were doing a lot worse than I was. So they just let me be. So I had a lot of time alone, quiet, just being. And it's something that I hadn't done in forever. Right. And it was that time thinking, okay, I think I'm really fortunate to be alive right now. So I have a choice. I need to heal from this, figure out what I need to change and do it and hope that I can get back to work and do things. Cause at that point I didn't know, I really didn't know. I knew I had a heart attack, but I didn't know the extent of where the blockages and all that. Sure, stuff. Yeah. So for me, it, it, that was the step. And then afterwards, thankfully they had basically a, a rehab session, which was, with exercise, with a mental health worker, with the yeah. nutritionist and all of that. So kind of get me going on some things. And then I had thankfully 17 weeks to recover before I went back to a job that I uh, was no longer uh, going to work for. So I had plenty of time to just reflect. And during that time, I started reading a lot of books and some self-help, some leadership inspiration, some, you know, a variety of different things. Uh, and I used to love to read and I had stopped reading quite frankly, right after university, cause you get into work and you just start doing things. So uh, I started reading a lot and that helped calm me down because you can't read and do 10 other things at the same time. That's why I, I encourage people to read because if you're reading a book and you can't be doing 10 other things, you can't work on a spreadsheet. You can't you know, yeah. edit a so true. Yeah. So it, it, that is, if that's one thing, you know, fine. And, and the beautiful thing about books is fiction, nonfiction, biographies, comedy, whatever, whatever you enjoy, well, go to the bookstore and pick some of those books up and just start reading. And you'll be surprised on how calm you are after you read for a little bit, because you're just focusing on you know, one thing at a time, which multitasking is the worst thing anybody can do. It's so true, but we do it and we continue to do it. And we think that we're good at it. We, that's the funny thing is I think that we all think that we're pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're not, we, we, we stumble across success and, and it doesn't last long. The key is to establish a life where you don't have to multitask. One of the things that I do, and again, this was a learning process for me too in my entrepreneurial journey was have themes for my days, but I needed to know what days to put things, how much to put on each of those days 
how many breaks to schedule in those days because you need to schedule your breaks, put them on your calendar, use your favorite color to color code it, whether it's paper or electronic, use your favorite color when you schedule your breaks throughout your days and your weeks. And the reason why you want to pick your favorite color is because your brain will naturally see that color first. So when you look back at how you spent the last couple of weeks or last couple of months, if you don't see a lot of your favorite color, that is a huge warning sign for you to go, mm, okay, I need to put a little bit more in my, my favorite color is blue. Um, even though here I am wearing black, I, I love blue. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still trying to find a good blue t-shirt, but you know, anyway, um, I do have a blue suit blazer too, but I, I, I tend to wear black. Um, but, but at the end of the day, you can look back and you can say, okay, that was a good week. Okay. This is a challenging week. Cause if you see, like, I know, for example, for, you know, July, it's been uh, pretty, you know, pretty productive for me. My schedule has been pretty full. So mm -hmm. I knew that, okay, I need to take some time off. So next week I'm taking off. Uh, so which even during a pandemic, I'm taking a vacation. Do that as well, people, even though you may not be Me able too. to go somewhere, mm -hmm. take the time off and yeah. just be, don't, don't do the same things you do or checking your email and all this stuff. Just step back, grab a book. If you can go to a cottage or someplace that's close by, do it. Um, just do the best you can make the most of it and mm -hmm. don't worry about what you can't do worry about or be thankful of what you can and yeah. it makes it so much easier and you know that's one thing I do with my calendar all the time is just making sure that I have me time or self-care time throughout the day yeah yeah I think that's huge and um talking about you know during this pandemic um you've just brought to my mind of uh, all of the things like yes I'm taking a, a week off and next week and it's to detach from devices mm -hmm. because I feel like during this time I've been like, I used to be attached to my devices a lot, but it just went, it was exponential. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we're all on them all the time now. Like we're talking to our friends this way. We're talking, we're doing it for business. Um, so I, I can really relate to needing a break and actually taking that time off. Um, but I also think, so, um, let's just talk a little bit about how we schedule those breaks and what should we schedule to do in them or not do when you're looking at putting those in your calendar. Yeah, when you uh, having a theme for your week, you know, so uh, you know, peel back the curtain a little bit. So on Mondays, I tend to do a lot of research on speaking opportunities because I speak publicly. A lot of it, of course, is virtual right now, but speak on stages uh, across the globe. Uh, Tuesdays are for intro calls or follow-up calls with, with people, uh, partners, whatever. Wednesdays are the day that I tend to record my podcasts. Uh, mm -hmm. and Thursdays and Fridays, I specifically block off. And then I leave them open for opportunities like this, for example, because I, I, I don't put things in there unless there's something that specific needs to happen during those days. It, it took time to do that. You know, I, I, I would love to say I work three days a week. That's not a reality, but, yeah. um, but I do that. And then on the weekends tends to be creative things, maybe some research, uh, writing you know, I write a lot of articles and whatnot. So I do a lot of writing then because I, I find it for me, that's my energy levels match what the task is. So mm -hmm. you need to do that with, with the work that you do. Now, as far as building and breaks, um, you should not work for longer than an hour. I know a lot of people say 50 minutes. So, you know, do deep work for 50 minutes, take 10 minute break, 50, 10, and then take a longer break. And, and it, everybody's different. Uh, some people are morning people, some people are not. Uh, and for me, I wake up early, so I make sure that my self-care routine of just you know, being active, even though the gym is closed, you know, doing some exercises that I can, going for a walk, nature trail is not too far from me, so I experience that. Yeah. Drinking decaf coffee, because you're not supposed to have a lot of caffeine when you're a cardiac kid, so, you know, I, I, I listen to my doctor. Um, and just you know, ease into the morning. I will skim emails, usually newsletters or whatnot, or if something came in over the night before.
for from somebody, but usually it's a handful of newsletters that I subscribe to that I'll read and get some information. And then, then I proceed into my day, depending on what day it is, it will depend on what I'm doing. But you definitely need to take breaks during the day. You need to have, especially for those of us that are working from home all the time, you need to have a hard stop to your work day uh, because a lot of people just have continued to work into the night. And I know sometimes because of the schedule, if they're a full-time you know, school teacher now as well, although I know in a lot of areas, it sounds like that the, the kids will be going back to class in the fall. We will see, fingers yeah. crossed, hope yeah. it's safe and wise for everybody involved. Uh, I know that everybody's gonna do their best to make it as, as safe as possible. But that has been a big challenge for a lot of parents because they've had to be the school teacher. And it's also in unison with when they normally work. So they've stretched their days out longer and um, it, it's stressful. Everybody's feeling yeah. the stress of a pandemic. Our dogs are looking at us. Why are you still here? Why are you dogs dog the dog you know I'm exhausted. Yeah, the dog oh yeah, you know, you know, my dog, you know, poor thing, he just he crashes in his bed pretty much the whole day now. He's like, I can't take you people anymore. Like, go know. away. Go away, feed me, go away. You know, why are you still here? Yeah. So for a lot of people, they're really and pets, you know, they're, they're struggling with this. And the key thing is focus on what you can do. Don't aim for perfection. Do the best you can. Communicate with your boss. Communicate with your coworkers. Communicate with your loved ones. Everyone is being impacted by this. And hopefully your employer is reasonable enough to know, okay, there's going to be some nuances because you have children and you need to teach them. Uh, yeah. So there's going to need to be some workarounds. And from an employer standpoint, I, I always tell these employers, focus on what you really need to do right now. Don't take on big initiatives. It's not the same. You are operating yeah. at a slower capacity than before. Um, you're not going to get the same output of people. Um, but also as an employer, find out what your clients need right now. Just right now. Don't worry about, well, we got to develop this thing for our 2022 launch. <laughs> Don't worry about 2022 right now, people. Focus right. on where we are right now. What do they need right now? Do those things and harmonize everything else because eventually we'll get to whatever normal looks like. And for every organization, it's going to look different because they may do some remote work. They may not. Um, and that's, again, another thing that leads to the stress because there's a lot of people that are wondering, okay, am I going to have to go back to the office? Is it safe? Right. Cuts? Am I going to lose my job? So they're stressing about everything. Yeah. And that just piles up. And then you see, you know, the burnout numbers that we're seeing today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you too, what do you think about, or how do you handle the news? The news? Yeah. Like, just the, like, oh, I, I know what the, the news, news is. Yeah. I, yeah, I uh, the news, much like fast food consume it very carefully don't mm -hmm. consume it all the time i don't watch the nightly news i don't watch any of the news stations here in toronto or when i'm in san diego i don't watch the news oh, well there's one station in and i watch the morning news on a san diego station um, yeah. just because it's entertaining and informative and all of that kind of stuff although yeah. i haven't been watching it lately because it's all you know the same stuff that we're seeing everywhere it's an input if you eat bad food, it's going to impact you, your digestive system, your health and stress and mental health, all that's going to be impacted if you're not eating the right foods for you. It's the same thing with consuming news. You will not have a problem finding negativity when you turn on the news, whether it's the U.S. presidential election, the skyrocketing COVID numbers, or some positive news for those of us in Ontario, where our numbers continue to drop and things are starting to open again, though it's a positive. For me, I will go online. I use Google News because I find it to be... Oh, that's a good one. You can set it up and have the things that you want in the feed. And yeah. you, can get, you can get headlines. You can skim them. Yeah. Um, and you can filter things out. And I, it's, it's a great way to do that because you don't want to be in a cave and not know... Uh, exactly but That's, you, yeah but you have to really limit just like the hours you work and all i think you have to have a boundary around what you're consuming because 
you know, in, in the U.S., you know, the, a lot of times the news starts at four o'clock in the afternoon. So go four till 630 and then the national news will come on from 630 to seven. And sometimes they'll have from 730 or seven to 730 more local news. So you've almost taken four hours of watching the news and yeah. all you've been seeing is negativity. And that takes a toll on you. And you can't, what, and you're seeing the same stuff over again, but it's just constantly pounding it into you because unfortunately the media has associated revenue with negativity. Um, right. And it's unfortunate. There's seek out things that bring you joy and happiness. News stories, they're out there. They exist you know, on whatever things that you're interested in. Um, but again, limit your exposure to news. Go in, check it once a day. I usually check Google News around 5 or 5.30. I talk to my mom every day. So you know, I you know, kind of give her a heads up on what's going on in Canada, she's in the U S so I, you know, I, you know, she sometimes says, well, I haven't turned on the news today. And I said, well, don't, you don't need to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same old, same old, you know, so don't, don't, there's no, no point in it. So, but yeah, that's the big thing. It's just limit your exposure to the news because it doesn't help you. I um, it informs you. Yes. But in small doses, if you just sit there and consume an entire, hour or two hours of news um, that does impact you. Your, your subconscious grabs on that and it just, you start taking it in. And even though if it's not impacting you, so yeah, yeah, definitely regulate what you watch. So some of the things that I think are big takeaways for me during this conversation are um, number one, obviously um, listen to your body and take care of it. <laughs> um, you know, do some, um, t have some time to yourself alone without uh, being attached to devices and, um, and start your day with time for yourself rather than getting involved in, in work right away, which I love that because uh, um, especially in this time um, and then set boundaries and breaks, mm -hmm. as you said. Um, and thank you for having the chat about the news too because it's something that you know I've been trying um very hard like I don't watch it at night and um but you're right I don't want to be uninformed but I don't want to be inundated with the negativity and I do feel as soon as I watch too much of it it does affect me mm -hmm. so um yeah so I think this is awesome what you're doing. And I think it's a huge leap from what you were as an employee to now um, being out there and helping people find ways to deal with their stress so that they stay healthy. That's fantastic. And, um, you. you know, I know that you do this through speaking and books and, um, you know, is there a way though that uh, this audience can get hold of you or... Yeah find you so they can find out more? Sure. Uh, my website is breakfastleadership.com. I'm on all the major social media channels at Be Fast Leadership. I always tell people, don't put that on a license plate. You'll get pulled <laughs> over. Um, <laughs> hashtag breakfast leadership. If I'm in all the social media channels, you can find me that way. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, I think I got a Pinterest thing. I'm not on TikTok don't think I'm going to do that, but maybe I will. I don't know, uh, yeah. but I'm not there now. Um, and one of the things we kind of alluded to a little bit is in life, you want to make sure that you do things that you enjoy. And I wasn't doing that during my burnout. And now I make sure to do it even during a pandemic to do a few things every week that brings me joy and fulfillment. So if people go to breakfastleadership.com slash bucket, they can get a free bucket list template. And what I mean by the bucket list is I have people in exercises on the left side of the piece of paper, write down all the things that they enjoy doing in life, going to cruises, concerts, coffee shops, their favorite restaurant, all of that. And be robust on this list. Everything that you just, when you think about it, you just smile and you think this is awesome. Then when you're done with that list on the right side of each of those items, write down the last time you did them. And when I do this exercise at conferences and whatnot, I constantly hear moans and groans is people stop doing things that they enjoy. Yeah. And I did that when I was burned out 
And that's a huge, huge warning sign because if you don't do, do things in life that you enjoy, what are you doing? Yeah, so you need to work those things out. And then the exercise afterwards, I say, okay, pick two or three things on that list and put it on your calendar in the next 10 days and do not cancel those appointments because treat them like they're the most important meeting you've ever had with your boss because the boss of your life is you and you need to do these things. They don't have to be important. Most of the things that I see that people list on these things could be done in 20 minutes and wouldn't cost more than 10 or $20. So it's not a case of, you know, eight week cruises or, you know, tour right. this or that. Most of this stuff is really simple that brings us happiness and joy. You can still do that because we all get the same 24 hours a day. You just have to have boundaries on how you spend it. And you can carve out a couple hours a week to do these things. And when you do, it makes such a huge difference in your life. I know it did for me. So, um, before we go, what is one of the things that brings you joy now? One of the things that brings me joy is quite frankly, sitting out on my balcony. I live in a condo in Toronto and just sitting out in the balcony and just listening to, you know, nature and noises in life. And uh, sometimes I'll be out there, I'll have music on. Sometimes I'll have a sporting event on in the background, just listening to it. But for the most part, I'm, I'm out there just breathing in, you know, not air conditioned air, but real air. And yeah. especially in Toronto, you know, we, we get about uh, 10 seconds of decent weather. So uh, I've been <laughs> using every one of those seconds. The summer has been good. Uh, yeah. I'm thankful for that. So I, that's one of the things that's really bringing me joy. Costs me nothing other than. Well, and I was just going to say, these are the things people take for granted. And, but those are things you got to put on your list, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you I know do what it. Bring, a silly little thing that brings me joy. Sure. It's just pulling weeds out of my garden because I'm not doing anything else but doing that. You're doing that, but what that's doing is it's uh, extending the life of the plants and fruits and vegetables that you have in there because the weeds, unfortunately, you know, choke off the resources. You're making their life better by doing that, and it's a therapeutic thing. So you're saving lives, basically, of these things, and it's you know making it visibly pleasant to look at because when you're done you look at it and you're like that looks amazing because you see all the vibrant colors and the things growing and all of that it's you know it's i don't have a garden because i'm in a condo but uh, i i know that exercise and when you when you see really good landscaping or uh, a beautiful flower garden or you know vegetable garden things like that it it's those are things in life you go okay that that's important that sustains us that's food. Yeah. That's yeah. health. That's things that's making our oxygen better. So that that's awesome. You do that, and again, only cost you you know the cost of the gloves that you use, or maybe some knee pads, or yeah, um, the, yeah it's the uh, knee pads now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, knee pads to pillows. I mean, basically, you're like you know, come up with some kind of a mechanical apparatus where you can just kind of hover around it. <laughs> You know, that, that you can add that. I'm sure Amazon sells those too. Yes, they do. They do. But yeah, so this has been great. Thank you for all this. This has been great oh, advice and um, it's a great story. I'm so glad that you're doing well now um, and that you've gotten away from that crazy life that you had and mm -hmm. that you're um, healthy and you're off the medication. That's amazing. Yes, amazing, it is. Amazing. Um, and thank you so much for your time. I'm going to put in the um, Facebook group your um, contact information. Perfect. So if people want to get in touch with you, they can. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, been... Michael. It's thank been you. lovely. You have Likewise. a great uh, weekend. You do the same. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.